So you're the lady That's behind it now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Her yes. new identity. People know who to shout at now. <laughs> It's so good to see you here. Hi, it's lovely to see you in the UK. So the whole sustainable transport agenda came came by through there. In Edinburgh, after my master's degree, um, I then worked for architects. You know, um, conservation architect for a while. Worked in a museum. Uh, then worked on a big shopping mall. Then I worked in London. So by the end of that, I was starting to feel a bit. You know, this is all good, but. It doesn't feel like that's my passion. And seven years ago, this job came up with a charity called Sustrans, which um, is a charity that's about sustainable transport. And that's been quite, um, you know, transformational for me right. because I went from being an architect designer to knowing nothing about transport to understanding now how key it is to make a good design work. So if you don't get your transport system right, if you don't get your public land right, how can we design good spaces, good buildings, and all that stuff? So it's a little snapshot of my journey to where so I am. So you've been now doing this uh, for more than a year, uh -huh. and have yeah. you seen some really strong impact? And what is what exactly mm -hmm. you know some of the measures that you've been taking to actually see yeah. uh, accessibility? I think. Um, Edinburgh that way has like a 26,000 uh, population, uh, population yeah. with uh, 5 million visitors like through the year. Yes. How is all that handled really? It sounds yeah. phenomenal. It is. It's been a very interesting process. So the first thing when I, so I'm in secondment to the City of Edinburgh Council, to local government, uh, for the past 18 months. And one of the things that we started off with was a place-based approach. So you know, you're looking at not just transport, because uh, that's one aspect of it, but everything to do with housing, economy, you know, tourism that you mentioned, uh, all these different factors have to come in to inform a decision for that place. So that's been quite interesting, you know, taking an approach that has been quite different to a traditional project uh, approach. So we've had a, a board consists of planners, uh, transport experts, uh, economic development folk, uh, housing, communications, finance, right from the beginning. And over the past 18 months, we've gone, you know, we produced a draft strategy uh, last May. You know, we've gone to the city citizens to talk about our ideas, what do you think? And we've had this resounding kind of, yes, we know change is required and this, this is the right way to go. So I'm really excited because last uh, last month we got approval for the strategy. It's a 10-year delivery plan strategy, which will see the city centre of Edinburgh completely transformed. Is there some kind of involvement of the citizens there besides, yes. of course, the policy makers? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, none of this is possible without you know the community involvement. And people have to shape this. It's not a, a, a vision or a strategy that is owned by the council or by me or by the councillors, you know, this has to be a city vision and we were very clear from the beginning. So we did, uh, last autumn, we did a, a, what was it, 12 week consultation. So public events, speaking to people, emails, you know, big conversations. So they were involved very in much in shaping this. And then we did, did it again um, last summer when we had the final plans, the draft plans to say, now what do you think of this? You know, one of the things that I've learned through the the work I've been doing the past year, Citizen Center Conservation, is the power of the voices of young people. And we work very closely with primary school students and, you know, even University of Edinburgh students. So, other, just to say, this is a le this is a legacy project for for you know your generation. And you need to shape this. And I have learned so much having done that. So there's been some really interesting ideas that have come through that now is going to be delivered. So things like a free city centre hopper bus, so free public transport. Okay. We've got uh, Edinburgh is quite a hilly city, so we've proposed four lifts that will help with the accessibility. Uh, a fully segregated cycling network, you know, you know, narrower streets, wider pavements, giving streets back to people, public spaces that are more meaningful, that you understand what the purpose is for that space. So it's a hugely exciting kind of journey that we started on. But you asked about what is the tangible thing that we have right. now. And one of the things that I was quite keen is not just have a report at the end of the process. You have to be able to point to something and right. say, this is what it means. 
So we started this project, a project called Open Streets, which okay. is a car-free uh, program. Right. So the first Sunday of every month, uh, 13 streets in Edinburgh City Centre go vehicle-free, which is amazing because when you take vehicles out of a busy street, then people can come in and shape what happens right. there. And that's been very community-led. So, you know, okay. the events or the activities that happen are very much... So there haven't been any local issues as such? Like, how can you take the cars away from us in yeah. a certain way? Yeah, I think right? there's, there's always... There, that, everyone's used to it. Yeah, so there's always... Not a backlash, but there's always questions about what happens to my car. Right. Know? But we understand this. Yeah. This is good for the environment, right. good for health. All the big narrative is understood. The big picture but, yeah. is good, but, but it's my, this is my parking you. spot you're taking away. And so we're starting it slowly, slowly. So what we've done is the Car Free Sunday is five hours on okay, a Sunday. That's it. So that gives people a little taste of, oh, actually, this isn't so bad. You know, we've got a place to park some us. Uh, we've had letters from residents saying, oh, we were very skeptical at first, but you know, now we can hear the sound of children sing rather than traffic or children laugh. Uh, so just seeing that kind of thing in practical terms has been quite useful. And we've learned a lot, you know, we've made mistakes and things haven't gone quite right and things we could do better. But the beauty of a pilot program like that is you can then make changes and you can save. So is this uh, restricted to Edinburgh or you're uh, planning to, you know, uh, replicate it across uh, UK? Across UK, well, the Open Streets program is it's an Edinburgh City Council program. Uh, but there are, there's been interest. I've come to London today to speak to teams here about how they could do that here. It builds on a movement that is global. So the first open streets movement was in Bogota, in right. Colombia. And you know, you see different cities, New York. So we've done that in India as yeah, well. Some exactly. parts very successfully yeah. and not not so successful <laughs> in the And others. a Bangor has yeah. there. Yeah, it's across, even in Pune, a exactly. yeah, lot of cities actually now. And it's amazing because again, it just shows what we can do with the space when it's not just for vehicles. So, um, in the UK, we're the first city to do open streets, but hopefully there'll be more from the start. So, but I'm quite proud of that because I can, you know, point to that and say, So you're the lady behind it now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. new identity. <laughs> People know who to shout at now. <laughs> but, uh, Humans have been walking, yes. right? And suddenly we make a big issue about it, like we need to walk, we need to walk. Yes. We're actually the animals, the yes. walking little animals, you know, who have actually come a long way. Yeah. So is this like overdone in some ways? Or do yeah. you think that it was absolutely necessary to do some, you know, really focus on walking yeah. the way it is being done today? It's such a good question because as you say, you know, if I bring it back to Edinburgh, it's a very walkable city centre, you know, the old town, which is a medieval old town, was built for people to walk. You know, it's not built for cars at all. The streets are narrow, it's meant, you're meant to enjoy that scale, the human scale, on foot. Uh, and, but then somehow, we've turned it into such an opposite experience. You know, you've got these massive tour buses and coaches that go down and, and you know, people are stuck on little pathways. It's not just about walking, it's about to me, it's about enjoying, bringing back that enjoyment of a space on foot. So walking is, you know, it's, it, when when I say means that in exactly, a way. absolutely, you know, and you see, you see things much better. I saw, I went to some, um, I can't remember who was talking, but you know, there was this thing about as humans when we evolve, our cities evolve accordingly. So it was, it's how you travel. So one hour travel is, is right. what you're used to. So when you walk for an hour and you build your city or town that way and then you've got your bicycle so you build it. and then you got your car so your city has grown based on how much humans have decided they can travel and that's quite interesting we're trying to bring it back to say actually you know this is how we're meant to do things mm -hmm. right so now we're talking of uh, livability happiness quotient and all well of that yeah well being quality of life these things have changed so much even in design of spaces and Absolutely. Uh, therefore, cities and our lives. Yes. How do you measure economic growth? You know, we had to do a business case for city centre transformation, and we've said that the, the value of the project—it's not the cost, it's the value of the project—is is based on the comes in the umbrella of quality of life and well-being, not the economic traditional economic models that we look at. And I think that's been a very interesting process as well in how you value that and how you put a monetary value to that. 
something new, something we're leading on as well. It's, it's exciting. Thank you, Daisy. It's, it's really been good talking to you. And